put in. I think it was about $3,300. And uh, I'm going to try to do a few other things while I got this thing out. But anyway, uh, that right there is plugged into the head. That's a uh, thermistor sensor, temperature sensor. Um, when I pulled the old transmission out, I broke that piece off. So I had to buy another one and it was about an $80 piece. So if you're pulling a transmission out of a uh, Polaris A900 XP, probably any, probably any, they're all probably the same. But anyway, even the 1000s, if uh, you're pulling it out, you might want to pull that out first before you start moving that transmission around because uh, there's not a lot of clearance between the engine and the transmission. I'm gonna try my best not to break it when I put the trans new transmission back in it. And if it looks like it's gonna be real bad, as far as a tight fit, I'm probably gonna pull that piece back out because that's an $80 piece. But anyway, just wanted to share I'm this. Still in this uh, swap out on a transmission. But anyway, I just wanted to remember that I just, uh, when this transmission went out on us, it was, uh, smoke was rolling out of the back of it like something was on fire. And for those that don't know, this is a, uh, this is the starter on this Polaris 900 Ranger. It looks like to me that, uh, it pops into the, um, you take them two bolts loose. I was going to take it out and clean it out, but I'm going to take my chances with it. But anyway, uh, that smoke that was uh, coming out of the back end of it, like something was uh, getting ready to catch fire, was the ground cable. The insulation, I guess that transmission got so hot, that insulation melted the... Um, insulation off of the ground cable so anyway i took some heat tape and uh put heat tape on it and cleaned the connection real good on the ground strap and tried to reroute it up underneath the starter it was laying like right between the starter and the transmission so like probably more up against the transmission it could have easily caught fire but it didn't thank god and uh um, when i uh Pull that transmission out. These brake lines, they're right underneath the transmission. So I don't know. It uh, looks like to me they got some wear on them. And a while back when I changed these A arms, I put this, uh, I ain't sure, they call it some kind of uh, tubing, but it's, uh, it's uh, for electrical wires. You know, if you're running electric wires or whatever in rub areas, I put a lot of that on the uh, what I could get to, but I couldn't get to these. And they're under the transmission, right under the transmission, and uh, they look like they got some rub rubbing's been going on. So uh, anyway, they uh, they sell this stuff here. You can get it at Walmart. You can get it at the Advanced Auto Parts, and it's a uh, it's just a uh, sleeve that. Um, give it a little bit more protection. So, uh, while I'm in here, before I put that transmission in there, I'm going to put this stuff as much as I can get on it, and especially the areas that look like they've been rubbing, which is from there back to the right side, passenger side, and to the driver side. Looks like there's been some rubbing going on. So this this might save you. Because, you know, if you rub a hole in one of them brake lines, there's a pressure switch on uh, this somewhere. It automatically shuts you down. So it's a safety thing. So I'm going to put this on there and try to get the full life out of these uh, brake lines. Okay, guys, this is the, uh, the wire flumes that I were talking about. I put on my brake lines. You can see now that... Uh, 
It's just going to give a little bit more protection. Thank you. Uh, I just uh, made a video earlier and told y'all that uh, about the uh, thermistor. So I went ahead and uh, took it off and the uh, thermostat housing to give me some more clearance because I set that thing up in there and there was no way I was going to be able to get that in there without that transmission hitting it and breaking it. And the, you can see it, it's right here where it goes. And then the thermostat housing is right here. So it's going to give me a little bit more clearance. I'm uh, trying to uh, mount the uh, transmission back into the, the new transmission back into the Polaris. One of my mounting bolts, I've noticed that you can see right there. There's aluminum embedded into the threads on the old bolts that come out of the, uh, the old transmission. So that tells me they over torqued it when they put this thing together. So now anyway, I gotta get that uh, aluminum out of these threads without messing them threads up because I didn't buy no new bolts. So I've got a tap and die set here. And this is a thread finder. It tells you what size thread you got, which mine is a one. Can't see it. 1.25 thread pitch. So, but my dies are, I think it's like an eight millimeter. And my dies are too small, so anyway, I've got an old school thread chaser. They also make thread files, which I thought I had some here, but I don't know where they're at. Imagine that. But this is a thread chaser. It's actually called a thread master. So I'm going to try to do it with that. Anyway, I just want to share that with you. Check your bolts. Make sure they're not full of shit. Uh, we got the transmission in, the new transmission. Um, How many bolts was it? Two, four, six. Uh, I don't have it torqued down yet, but there is a torque specs on it. So in the pattern, the torque specs. So I'm figuring that out now, but I think it's this side over here, the first two bolts is uh, 64 foot pounds. And then the other two bolts over here is 44 foot pounds. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of thinking about alignment, but this, this shaft here has to be aligned with this crankshaft. And... I'm uh, still working on this transmission and putting all this stuff back together. Um, the throttle body, which is this, there's nothing wrong with it, but you can see all the grime and dirt. 7,500 miles on this thing. I'm going to take it off and uh, do a good cleaning on it while I'm this far into it. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. While I was in here, somebody recommended me to go ahead and change these boots. These boots right here are for the uh, fuel injection rails. So... I got them from Rocky Mountain ATV, they're Polaris OEM parts. I think they were 30 something dollars a piece. Um, I just put the uh, the prop shaft 
in here, a new prop shaft, but I've already got the transmission in here and torqued down and already had it mounted and everything. And I, I you ain't got much room in here. And I, uh, couldn't get this prop shaft on the uh, torque, uh, the snorkel gear. So I looked at the motor mount and took this bolt out here and was able to raise it all up with a pry bar enough so I could get that prop shaft on that snorkel gear, thank God, because I didn't want to take all that apart again, because I've already got the rear end and the axles and everything in it. So what should they have done? They should have, uh, before I put all these torque bolts, these bolts in and torqued it all down, they should have put the, I should have put that prop shaft in there and let it all bend loose. Hey guys, I got this video, uh, this uh, no-go alignment tool checker for the transmission from uh, Hunter Works. Um, and it is to uh, make sure, it's, it's kind of like a no-go gauge is what he calls it, but it's hunterworks.com if you want to uh, look at the video. He's got a video on how to do it. And I just kind of basically follow his videos per Polaris's uh, specifications to do it. And you put this on here, and if this lines up, it should go on there fairly easy. Just like that. And it does. But it didn't the first time I did it, so I had to go back in and loosen all my bolts and retorque it and get this on there and uh, re go back through the torque, you know, numbers sequence that Polaris recommends and it works so thank god I bought it I guess because uh, it also uh, I think it's also improves the belt life um, I'm running Dura Clutch which I also bought that's where I bought my Dura Clutch from was Hunter Works and uh, I bought a new belt just as a spare I'm going to keep my old belt on there for the time being but anyway that's uh, that's it now I just got to put it all back together Okay, so Mark's got the whole transmission back in. Everything is back together, except the bed has to be put on. That's it. Everything else is put back in there for the uh, transmission swap. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, share the video. Give us a like and uh, subscribe, please. It'll help us out. It's free. Thanks for watching. See you on the trails.